Good morning and welcome to another 15 plus 15 devotional time. Just got to turn something off here. We're glad to be with you on this new day where we can celebrate God's word, celebrate his presence and pray for one another. Amen. So thank you for joining us. We are on our last message when it comes to this whole area of First Kings chapter 8 and a little bit of chapter 9 where we are talking about how the King Solomon dedicated the temple, dedicated the people, and dedicated the country of Israel. Uh, all those things are kind of going on and uh, we are grateful that they are there as truths to teach us about ourselves, that we can learn things about who we are, we can learn things about the body of believers, the church, and how God affects and doesn't affect things around our uh, neighborhood, our world, as it were, as we see some of the things that are being talked about and related to. So when we go to First Kings uh, chapter 9, we're only going to look at two verses and then we're going to finish up here. We're going to see that uh, how there was God gives a clear warning. Um, you know, you don't get often sermons talked about warnings. And uh, we do talk about often about the whole area of the need for salvation and where people need to give their lives to Christ. And because we want to warn them that without doing such a thing, they will have an eternal destruction in a place called hell. And so we do warn about that, about our end of life journey. Uh, we need to be warning people about that, to get things right, to give their lives to Christ, to confess their sins and and come before the Lord and ask for that forgiveness and have him come into their lives and fill their lives. But, you know, there's also a lot of warnings concerning the things that we do before we pass away that God gives to the leaders, that he gives to the people he gives to the individuals. And so we need to see that he is saying this here. And you say, well, we're under the age of grace. We don't have to worry about all that. Well, not be so sure about that because we're still called to live a righteous life. We're still called to put on the breastplate of righteousness, the full armor of God. There will still be battles, both in the physical and in the spiritual realm. And we're to be a light unto darkness because darkness is all around us. And so... We're going to pray about that shortly. Some of the things that are going on in parts of the world, oh boy, they're just uh, terrible. But we need to be praying. So here, Solomon, I believe again in a prophetic type word, where God is speaking to him and speaking through him. In this chapter 9, verses 1 through to 9, he is giving him, uh, God is giving Solomon a warning for the people. Now, you think right at that time, it's great celebration. Why would they need to give a warning right at celebration? Because that was the time when they knew that the presence of the Lord was now there with them and amongst them and in the temple. But, you know, and so they're rejoicing in that. But then Solomon, through uh, the wisdom of God, that he, God speaks to him and says, Okay, but if my people go this way or do these kinds of things, I will not be with them. And that's a warning. I think sometimes we don't realize that often we don't have the blessings of the Lord because we have got sidetracked onto other things or off in another direction, which is not the will of God. So as we go here, we'll see uh, just to uh, verses 8 and 9, it says, and as for this house, now he's talking about his presence in that, is exalted. Everyone who passes by it will be astonished and will hiss and say, Why has the Lord done thus to this land and to this house? So a question is asked. Then they will answer, Because they forsook the Lord their God, who brought their, brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt and have embraced other gods and worshiped them and served them. Therefore, the Lord has brought all this calamity on them. And so, if you remember our context, just a few verses before, again, it reminds, he's reminding the people of the promises that was made to David. 
He's also reminding the people how important it is to follow the Lord's commands, statutes, and judgments. And we talked about that. And if they don't, they will be cut off. They will be cast out. And they will become a proverb or a byword. These are powerful statements that I think we need to take into account. That the, the church nowadays needs to take into account that there is a journey we're to walk. And we're to stay on that journey. And if we stray one way or another, there's consequences to the things that happen. We somehow don't think that there's consequences. But there is. Even the consequence of just surely of apathy. Of just, well, you know, now I'm saved. I'm going to hang on and, and wait until I go home and be with the Lord. These things, you know, the journey of, of life here is very important. How we walk it. And how we speak and how we live, all these things uh, affect and have an impact on our lives each day. And we need to be aware of them, you know. It's like, you know, that's why many houses over here have mirrors. Because we need to look in the mirror morning, in the morning and, and be impacted by what we see. Well, the thing is, we need to look into the Word of God and let the Word of God look in us and be impacted by what we see. So here, a question is, is given by the Lord. He starts off by saying, you know, when he says, and as of this house, he's talking about the place that is being dedicated. This place that, that they have dedicated, you know, for the Lord. He is talking about them and at that place. And he says, and, and because they have stopped following, because of context, and they've stopped following, they have not kept his word. They've been cut off and cast out. He goes on and says, this is, well, this is what the testimony is going to be when, when the presence of the Lord is not in that place. And I think it's the same thing. When the presence of the Lord is going to, that was once in us. we got a lot of, I mean, I've lived in the Steinbach area for a long time. we got a, a lot of people whose temples who were once belonged to the Lord are now empty. There is no presence of the God, of God there. And I'm wondering if it's the same type of thing that's going to happen where people look on them and say, what happened to them? What, what, what took place in their life? They were excited. They were dynamic. They were in the worship team. They were in the leadership of the church. What happened? What happened? And we're going to find out some of the things that happened. And it says, and for this house, which is, is exalted, you know, you've lifted it up. You said something powerful about this house. And he goes on and says, and everyone, all those people who will pass by, there will be foreigners, there will be different people who will pass by, It they will be astonished. They will be saying, man, I don't know what took place, what, what went on here. And not only that, you know, it says, and that they are going to hiss. You know, this idea of hissing, or it's more like also like shaking their head and murmuring under their breath, like, what happened? You know? We can't believe it, Lord. Look at this beautiful temple. Look at this beautiful person that you had changed their lives. What happened? And he goes on, and they will hiss, and they will say, Why has the Lord done this to the land uh, to and to this house? And the idea, when he talks about the land, this is the promise. You know, what had happened to the promise that was given? What had happened to the presence. So when you talk about the land, you talk usually it reminds them of the promised land. When you talk about the house, that's the presence of God. So what happened to the promised land and what happened to the promise or to the uh, presence of God? And and that's the question that we may need to be asking, what happened to these people? They were in the provisions of God, they were walking in the promises of God. And now something's gone wrong. They had the, the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit. You know, sometimes people will tell me when they when I ask them, how's it going with the Holy Spirit? I had actually had one or two people say, been there, done that. It's like they've moved on. There is no been there, done that when it comes to the land and it comes to the promises and the presence of God. It needs to be consistently there all the time. So the people walking by, they're shaking their head, they're gossiping, they're, they're, they're asking the question, you know, they were astonished what took place. And that we may not have that physical temple 
uh, here today or in Jerusalem, but we have a temple, which we are, and uh, people are looking at us. You know, and hopefully people aren't walking by us and shaking their heads. You know, I love it when people come by the mall and uh, they come by the office and I'm there. And often, sometimes they don't say anything, but you know what they do? They give a thumbs up or they say, praise the God for the witness of Jesus Christ coming forth from this place. That's what happens. See, when you have a testimony for God, then there is going to be praise unto God. There is going to be the blessings of God upon what you're doing, his presence and also, there is going to be the power of God who is going to anoint this house. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And so we say, well, this is just Old Testament. But no, it's actually very relevant for today. And then he goes on and answers. It says, then they will answer. These people will answer. They will actually have an answer. <laughs> the people that are walking by, they'll have an answer of what went wrong. See, it's, a, it's interesting, the world knows the standard of how the Christian should be living. The world knows the standard of the presence of God. isn't Because this is, this is the world walking by, they're asking you this question, and then they, they, they say, they give this answer. Now think about this, you say, oh, that's just back then. No, it's, it's so relevant today, I was so excited when I was reading this, that they, they, they will answer, because they forsook the Lord their God. They knew the answer. Do you know most people know where they're sinning? Do you know most people know where they're making mistakes? They already know the answer within them, what's gone wrong. But isn't it interesting? Other people who will go by also know the answer, what went wrong. You know, they will tell you, oh, they got taken away by this, or they got into materialism, or they got into all these other wealth and, and busyness and everything. People will know what went wrong. People ask me all the time, you know, I don't know what's going on in my family. And I said, yeah, I can tell you. You know, you're out of fellowship. You're out of the word of God. You're out of prayer. Are you doing those things? And they'll say, no, we don't have time. That's the problem. <laughs> I don't have to spend, have hours of counseling time with you. I can just quickly ask if you've got a problem. I'm going to ask you, what about these three things? How's the fellowship going with other believers? How is the time in, in the Word of God? How is your time in prayer? You know, it's all interconnected. And it says here that these people forsook the Lord their God. They knew they forsook the Lord their God and who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt. They knew. Now remember, this is, this is hundreds of years later. The people who were going to walk by knew that the power of God brought the people of God out of the land of bondage. They knew. They knew what was wrong. Isn't this an amazing thought? They knew what was wrong. And he says, and these people said, and they were brought, uh, and their fathers who brought them out of the land of Egypt, uh, these people now have, since that time, they have forgotten how God has delivered them. You know, it reminds me of their first love. They have forgotten their first love. You know, I'm reminded every day when I when I look in the mirror or I walk around, I have to thank God. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you for taking me out of drugs and alcohol. Thank you for taking me off the streets. Thank you for providing. Thank you for a wonderful family. Thank you. You know, if you don't have a heart of thanks every day, you've got problems already. You need to thank God because God is a God who delivered. He delivered his people. He brought them out. He brought them into the promised land. He, and he, and he, and he, and he was, has been with them. And that these people walking by said, they have forgotten this. They have forgotten what God has done. And what they have done, they have embraced other gods. Oh boy, if I had have time to preach on embracing other gods, I can tell you throughout North America and around, I can tell you over in Europe, you know, places that there was powerful movement of God, revivals and everything else that has taken place. And then people ask me, what has happened? I can tell you, they've embraced other gods. The God of materialism, the gods of this world. I mean, they've embraced these things. You know, it's amazing what we embrace. And the idea of embrace is now what we hug. We hug all kinds of things and we hold on to them dearly. And those things that we embrace and hug to take us away from the deliverance of what God has done. Take, take us away from the reminder of what God has done. And he goes on and he says, they embraced other gods and worshiped them and serve them. So, 
they, you know, not only they began to have these other gods, as I said yesterday or the day before, these gods are all over the place. Little statues, little monuments, you know, little uh, things that people put up on their houses, you know, the New Age movement and all this other kinds of exercise stuff and all the things that we do, you know, all the things that we try to do to bring peace to ourselves. We're embracing other gods. And we're beginning to worship them. We're beginning to use our bodies. See, worship is something that's supposed to come from our bodies. And we're beginning to use our bodies to worship those materialistic things, to worship those idols, those things that are not of God. And you say, well, we don't do that today. Oh, do we got scales in our eyes and wax in our ears. Let me tell you, we're doing a lot of the same thing. We've been delivered and now we're caught up in the things of this world. We're beginning to worship him, and it goes on and not only worship them, that way we're serving them. We're now coming to bowing down to them and say, We'll serve you, you know, we'll serve. <laughs> so I have I used to tell people the more things you have, the more you have to serve those things and fixing them and looking after them and keeping them everything, or serving them. You know? And you say, well, Jim, you're going a little bit too far here. I don't know. I, I'm trying to shake and wake up and say, hey, come on, something's wrong. And he goes on, therefore, the Lord has brought all this calamity on them. So when they see that the presence of God is not gone, when they see the famines and they see uh, the, the, the all the, the possible things that could take place, you know, it says here, and that the Lord has brought all this calamities on them. Now, you may be thinking the Lord actually did this. Well, I'm thinking when I was praying about this, it's not so much that the Lord does it, but he removes his grace or his presence. And because of the absence of his presence, the absence of grace, it then allows the door to be open to darkness and the prince of this world to bring about these calamities on us. Remember, Job could not be touched. You know, all these kinds of things. And, and we need to realize that when we change direction. So as we conclude here, we will see that the people, they began to forsake. They began to forget. And they stopped for going, for, uh, following. Three F words. They forsook, which means they turned another way. They forgot. They had, you know, they just forgot their first love. Forgot, you know, they're so busy being busy. Oh, people are busy being busy. You know, the God of sports. Oh, people are being busy, being busy. No time for fellowship. No time. You know, we've forsaken God. we got to be at this sport tournament and that sport tournament and all those kinds of things. You know, we've got out of fellowship. You know, uh, COVID was great for that, getting us out of fellowship. And so we forsook, we forgot, and we started to follow other gods. And he tells us that the judgment of God will come upon us when these things take place. You know, because we have these calamities or these disasters or tragedies begin to take place. So we need to stand and look in the mirror and say, well, Lord, help us to see if we are still on the right track or if we've gone on on another track. If we're still on the pathway of Jesus Christ or we've gone on to the pathway or we're slowly going off on the side of the pathway of the world. We need to ask that question. We all do including me. And I've been asking it a lot. Oh, I want to be a vessel for the Lord and in and, and a way that he could continue to use us. But it means to get back on track. It means to stop forsaking and stop forgetting it and start following. Amen. So let's pray about these scriptures. Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that there is a word here, a word of warning, a word of judgment that you are speaking through Solomon to tell the people. I mean, yeah, that day was a great day of celebration. You know, the presence of God. You were in the temple. You were in the city of Jerusalem. You were high and lifted up. People were following you. People were rejoicing. But we need to be not, you know, in a place, Lord, where we just uh, take it all for granted. Because, Lord, we even see in our own community. We even see in our own churches around about us, both here in Canada, United States, around the world, where people just took you for granted. And it wasn't long that they began to turn their back and, and walk away, that they began to forget, Lord, the, what you, the work you have done, and we have begun to follow after the things of this world. Oh, God, forgive us. Cleanse us. Wash us, oh, God. We are desiring revival in our land. 
and and that you have given we're desire we desiring revival and the presence of you in this temple O oh god father just bring about today that which you are calling as to do help us not to say that's old no lord this is relevant for today this is what's going on in our present day and so lord i just lift up all who hear this word that they will not only those who don't know you yet will come to know you as lord and savior but those of us who do know you that we will come before you and ask this question know that there's an answer and then begin to make the changes that need to take place so that we can become back into the fullness and the power and the anointing of your Holy Spirit in our lives. So we pray this in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Wow, I hope that stirred you up. It's stirring me up. We want to also continue to pray for the country of Myanmar. You know, Cohen is there and... Uh, and she's doing all she's doing well they're working through things but this this week um earlier this week uh, a pastor who was 47 kum kum ja lee was assassinated uh, you know it, it just it just rips open my heart uh gunman came up on a on a motorcycle where he was and entered in because he had he had, you know, been speaking out and, and talking about the calamities that the, the, this army was doing, uh, you know, against the people. And uh, and now they come in, there was no uniforms on, no nothing, just came in with guns, came into where he's sitted, sitting and just uh, killed him. 47 years old, a pastor, you know. You no, know, isn't there any guilt at all? Isn't there any, you know, thing that they, any type of remorse in them? And the answer is no. And so today uh, they're having a funeral for him. Uh, and and many people are going to come and many people are going to mourn. This was a man of God and, you know, only 47 years old. And this is this is what Satan wants to do when we become... When we forsake or we follow after or whatever, Satan is trying to bring destruction to the land. But thank God that this man of God was being a light. He was standing up. And now we need to pray for him and his family. And for those who are going to be speaking at the funeral today. And for, for Call Wynn as she is in amongst us. Like she's been telling me like <laughs> things that I'm just thinking, wow, Call Wynn, you 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 know. God just protect you and be with you. And she may even be watching right now if, this, if the internet is good. And so, Father, we just pray for this this uh, family of this pastor, this leader that is that is his life has been taken away. He's been martyred for his stand because of you. Lord, we know that there's all around the world that there's martyrs going on. Lord, I've been hearing not only from there, but Pakistan. I've been hearing from Nagaland. I've been hearing... Uh, again, throughout Myanmar and other countries in the world, where people are taking a stand for Christ, and its cost, and 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 the cost is, is that they need to lay down their life. And so, Father, I also pray for that family, for his children and those around about him, and Lord, for the community of believers that as they mourn, uh, as they mourn at this time. I pray for Cohen as she is there, the things that she will be doing, you know, today and tomorrow. Lord, I pray for the outreach. We were praying for that on Monday. Lord, we have an opportunity, a window to get the gospel and discipleship material out there. Lord, thank you that she's going to be working on that today and that in the next number of days. And Lord, whatever, when the enemy comes, we know that you, Lord, raise up a standard and push back the enemy. And we pray, oh God, that your grace and love will go forth. And that you will just be with Colwyn too and their family there. And now we want to pray for those who are not well. Uh, we've got um, different ones that we've been praying for and asking the Lord to, to minister to. Uh, also, you know, not that it's, you know, we we're praying about this, but I just, it came to my mind today. <laughs> today would have been Irene's birthday, my first wife's birthday, and I'm thinking, boy, she would have been 74 years old. I'm not sure how happy she would be about that. <laughs> but, but we want to pray for our family too, just as, you know, that some of our children and grandchildren will be thinking about this. We want to pray uh, again for, for Ted and Carmen. We want to pray for Everett as, as he is going through, you know, this uh, whole surgery. We want to pray for our, our neighbor, Margaret, that had to, to be moved into a senior's home. 
and uh, struggling with that. We want to pray for Benar alone as going through this cancer and Irwin who is going through a, a sickness in his body. There's many that we need to pray for. But So let's just pray, Father, we come before you right now and we ask, O oh Lord, that these things that have come upon people's lives, Lord, these, these challenges of sickness uh, for Ted, Lord, as he is waiting for a transplant and, and other information for karma as they are deciding what to do concerning the surgery, Lord, of this cancer. We pray for Everett as, they, as he draws closer to the surgery that he will be involved in. And Lord, we thank you for that lady that came up the other day to the table and said, thank you for praying because my daughter is fine now. Everything is dealt with and she is okay. And I thank you for that testimony. Lord, I thank you that we have the freedom to pray for miracles. Lord, I even got an email yesterday, and the Lord, I was astonished where a country is passing a law that they cannot have prayer services for healing anymore. I'm just thinking, oh Lord, what is going on in our world? How corrupt things are that we can't even pray for one another to be healed. Lord, I pray for Ben R, oh God, that your, your Holy Spirit will be upon him and Kathy, Lord, and the family, the business. I pray for Irwin, Lord, that you will be with him and the business and People in our community that are walking deep valleys, oh God, touch their lives, touch their bodies. And Lord, that you would be our, with our own uh, children and grandchildren as they think about what this day represents. And Lord, I just ask for the many other prayer requests, the other things that are going on around the world. Oh, Father, just be, just your will would be done now. Cover all, you know, Lord, the many that are on the list, Lord, that you would just... Uh, be with Margaret, even our neighbor, Lord, as she is adjusting. Thank you that I could pray with her yesterday. And thank you for others that came into the office to help yesterday. And Lord, as we go forward and start our Easter season now, oh God, that you would just uh, give us the strength and wisdom now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Just one other prayer request uh, that I had hoped that you could put down on your piece of paper someplace if you got some. Uh, today is the day we again uh, are been approached to be in front of the dollar store. And uh, today we're having everything set up and we will be there for the next right up until Easter. Um, handing out these Easter booklets and coloring books and praying for the people's needs and that. And so please, this is every day. Please, please pray for that the, that the seeds that are planted that the water of the Holy Spirit will germinate them. So that will be starting today, looking forward. It's always that time when that's about, that I, when my miracle book that I told you about that I'm writing, <laughs> that I keep my miracles listed in, it really fills up during these times when we're outside the dollar store. God does amazing things. And uh, we're praying not only for miracles to take place but lives to be powerfully impacted for our lord jesus christ amen so god bless you thank you for joining us this finishes up this and then on friday lord willing we're actually going to go through and talk about some of the easter things that are found within this book as we move into the easter the main easter season this week and next week and so friday we're going to be moving in that area and talk about the first day about the triumphant entry uh, of Christ coming into the to Jerusalem. Amen. So we love you. Keep on keeping on. Keep all these prayer requests before you. Hopefully as we're praying about them, you're joining with us in prayer and we love you. And Lord willing, we hope to see you on Friday. Bye-bye for now.